Coach, obviously off a national championship, uh, you know, we've, we've talked with you in the past about, you know, your off-season program and how important that is to your success. What, uh, what have the last couple months been like for the ladies? Well, uh, we, take a, we took a break over Christmas, and then uh, first week of school we get back, we start going, and it's actually one of the hardest times. And uh, for the old school people, the old school football, we, we do the circuit, which Boyd Epley invented. So that started first week of school, and that's really a tough part of our training. And then uh, we're, we're training in the sand as well, so uh, we're preparing for our beach season. And so they had about three weeks, and it's back at it probably harder. We're probably going harder now than we were in the fall. You know, beach season is, is interesting. I feel like it's one of those sports that flies, still maybe a little under the radar for a lot of people, but what does that all entail for you guys? Well, uh, it's, it's, first of all, it's, it's two completely different sports. You know, instead of six people, it's two people. It's in the sand. Nobody can jump. So everybody, you know, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you're 6'5 or 5'2. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Everybody is equal in the sand. The sand is the greatest equalizer. So then it comes down to how to play the game, and you have it's a completely different game. But what we like about it is a lot of the things we learn in there, how to play the game transfers over. And the happiest people in, in our beach team are middle blockers because all they do is block and hit. Well, in sand, they got to do everything because there's only two people out there. And then the other people that are really happy are liberos because they just basically dig and pass. Well, now they get to hit, set, serve, do everything. So those guys love it, and it's a great developmental part of our training that we'd like to do uh, this time of year and of course they love it and, and we're going to go to Hawaii and play all the top teams so well, that's not, to, not such a bad deal going to yeah. Hawaii but does everybody participate in beach at some level for you guys yeah actually what's really interesting this year all our returning players do it but um, all the seniors we have five seniors four of them want to play beach oh. you know you know and so I mean, Kelly Hunter's in a master's program for business, and Brianna's already graduated technically. So they're just, Ani's got one class she's taken, but they want to play sand because they like it so much. The only senior that didn't is Cindy Townsend because she's getting ready to get her PhD, and she's like in a, some lab studying micro something, biology something <laughs> every day, and it works like 14 hours a day in this lab. Talking to a Nebraska volleyball coach, John Cook. You mentioned Kelly Hunter participating in beach for you guys, but I know in the offseason, a bit of news, Hunter Atherton electing to transfer from your program. What does that do for your setter position next year? Well, we have a freshman coming in who's signed, and Nicklin Hames, and uh, so she's going to have a, a great shot, and then we'll, we'll try to find, figure out something for another setter. Um, but uh, it's the way it goes sometimes. But this spring, uh, Kelly is actually uh, going to try to go to the national team this summer and try to play professionally overseas next year. So she wants to train, so she'll train with us in the spring when we do our indoor you know, version of training a spring, spring ball in April. You know, you uh, with Kelly Hunter wanting to play for the national team, you've had a bunch of players been able to live that dream and actually accomplish it. Do you think she has what it takes to make it at that level? There's no question, and uh, uh, she ha she has the ability. She's good enough. She's a great leader. The question is, will will she embrace the lifestyle? You know, and living overseas, going all year round, you're away from family. It's just it's a tough deal, and uh, but you don't know until you go and try that. So. That'll be her next step, but she definitely can play out there. And uh, but you know that's a year-round deal playing overseas and then coming back and playing with the USA team, and, and uh, that's what she's going to have to figure out if she's up for that. Yeah, I mean, is the mental side of that the, the really the toughest part for an athlete at that level? Yeah, and for example, like Katie Rawlson, I was actually texting with her this morning. You know, she's in Japan. Nobody speaks English. She lives by herself. So you know, just think about that. You you know, you have nobody really to converse with. And she has a translator when she goes to practice that's there, but uh, you know, different different country, and you really don't have anybody to talk to because you, know, you don't speak the language. So those are the challenges. And you know, Jordan Larson right now is in Turkey, and uh, people speak English there, but you know, that's a crazy part of the world right now, you know. And so those are the things you have to be able to adapt to. Yeah, we actually had Jordan on our show. She was stuck in the airport in Belgium, I want to say, and she talked to us right before you guys played for the national title. So I've got a chance to catch up with her a little bit. Um, away from volleyball, um, obviously new AD, new administration at Nebraska. You've had a chance to kind of get used to the, the I guess, new way of doing things. Have you noticed any you know, palpable changes already in kind of the environment and the culture? No question. And I'll just I'll summarize it by this. Compare our, women, our basketball team's records this time this year compared to last year. Volleyball won the national championship. Bowling's ranked number one. Men's gymnastics ranked number one. Wrestling teams ranked gymnastics. Women's gymnastics is ranked. So all the sports going on right now, 
Uh, track is already talking about winning Big Ten championships. So just look at the record since the changes were made. And, and so I felt like, first of all, I felt like Nebraska won a bowl game. And then the second thing is, is just the, the mindset of, hey, we're going to be, we're going to win. And I think it's already spilling over, and that's one example, the examples I just gave you. What's the excitement level been with uh, the new football staff and Scott Frost coming back? Those guys aren't around very much, but uh, uh, I, I actually hung out with Scott s Saturday, and he's, you know, he's head spinning right now because he's got so much going on. But he was in our neighborhood looking at houses, so I had him come by. And, um, uh, and then uh, uh, Zach Duvall, who I, I knew back when I was an ass, uh, assistant here, he was a GA, and then our strength coach, Brian Kamita, and him started as GAs together. So I got to see him at a staff meeting on Monday. But it's, it's really exciting. I mean, these guys bleed Husker. It's, it's so cool to have them back.